Minix is moving beyond the ultra-budget processors into the mid-range, and this is the NGC N512. Not a very memorable name. Anyway, it comes in a premium aluminium alloy shell which looks and feels really nice, while the bottom is plastic for wireless reception. The design and feel of this one is very close to Intel Nux of old, which made me reminisce on how I started the channel with an 8th gen Bean Canyon Intel Nux review. Yeah, there's been a lot of minis since then. The comparison to the NUC is fitting because the NGC N512 does indeed feature an Intel CPU. It's a previous generation Alder Lake i5-12600H consisting of 12 cores with 16 threads, 4 cores of performance, and 8 efficient. This Alder Lake CPU predates Intel's Arc graphics, so Iris XE is used if the Mini is running in dual channel mode, otherwise it reverts to UHD. Inside the box you'll find a HDMI cable, monitor mount, and a tiny 100 watt USB-C GAN power supply. Yep, this Minix is powered by USB-C on the back. The first Intel Mini I've come across over the years that isn't a budget Celeron or Pentium. That being said, it is just a power port and doesn't provide any display out. If you want a one cable USB-C solution for a monitor, you'll need to use the Thunderbolt 4 port next to it. The two HDMI 2.0 will give you an extra two displays, maxing out at 4K 60Hz. There's a couple of USB 3 10 gigabit ports and dual Realtek LAN. One being gigabit and the other 2.5. On the front of the Mini is a USB C 10 gigabit port, also supporting display for a maximum of four. There are another two USB 3 10 ports, an audio jack and power button. Inside it is an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201 for wireless and Bluetooth. Minix's Intel Mini is available for $410 US dollars as of this video with a $30 off coupon and that comes with a 512GB SSD and 16GB of RAM. It's not yet available on their website. Now let's have a quick look inside it. Minix has made it easy to unscrew this Mini, but there's no way to pry open the lid easily. After a bit of cosmetic damage from using a flat headed screwdriver, I finally got it off. Inside you'll find dual 2280 M.2 slots. The outer slot is Gen 4 and the inner one is Gen 3. There's no cooling at all on the included Kingston OS drive. This review unit only has one RAM slot occupied by a DDR5 4800 stick, so that means it's running in single channel mode and will show up as UHD graphics in Windows Device Manager. I'll add a second stick later to see how much extra performance we can squeeze out of it with DDR5. Finally, the M.2 wireless card is hidden under the SSD. Windows 11 Pro is included with each Mini. No issues were found with a malware scan. There weren't any problems using Ubuntu either if you prefer to use Linux. Okay, let's see where the i5-12600H falls against a range of newer and older CPUs. For single core Cinebench, the 12600H holds up pretty well, being around the new core Ultra 5 CPUs. It's less impressive in multi-core around AMD Ryzen 6600H level. Geekbench single core again shows a pretty good score. Almost up there with the newer Ultra 7. But a multi-core drops down the stack and is even behind the 150U. The video encoding benchmarks show it's not the greatest, but does outperform a few other Intel CPUs. It's the same story with AV1 video encodes. Moving on to graphics, in 3D Mark, again, it only beats a few CPUs. Throwing in a second RAM stick brings the score up to 6600H level and is a 12% increase. Almost 11% in DX12 Time Spy and 16% in Steel Nomad Lite. For the game tests, I'm using the original configuration with single channel memory. The 12600H is no gaming powerhouse, but some esports titles play well, although that 1% low in Valorant isn't great. Dota 2 runs okay at low detail. Counter Strike 2 is below a 60fps average. And League of Legends runs well, as it often does on most hardware. An older AAA game like GTA 5 plays fine with the integrated graphics. Don't be as dumb as you look. We 
Something newer like God of War Ragnarok isn't great even with FSR upscaling set to balance mode. Emulation wise, you can play the Wii U library on this mini at 1080p. PS3 games will be a hit and miss with MotorStorm running poorly. Dropping the resolution to 720p will help. Another option with the Mini is to use an external GPU with a Thunderbolt 4 port. I tested the NGC N512 using a dock with a Radeon 7600 MXT and it worked fine. The audio latency test is run with Cinebench running in the background and typically fails when the CPU thermal throttles. Minix's NGC N512 passes which is a nice change. One of the more impressive aspects of Intel's 12th gen CPUs is how well they handle 4K video editing in Adobe Premiere. Export times might be long, but the video decode on the fly is second to none when it comes to minis. The included Kingston SSD may be Gen 4, but it's one of the slower ones out there and around Gen 3 speeds overall. The drive gets pretty hot when thrashed and has one of the highest temps recorded. A heatsink here would have really helped. Unfortunately, Bluetooth range isn't great and one of the shortest recorded for consistent audio playback with a Bluetooth speaker. That extends to Wi-Fi as well. The Mini failed with the 12 meter or 39 feet test from the router using the 5G band. Valorant was unplayable. Minix's NGC N512 draws 11 watts from the wall when idle which is slightly above average. Maximum power draw was interesting. This mini peaked at just 69 watts from the wall. And that helps the maximum CPU temp hold under 90C. Even though the power draw isn't high, it's not quite under load and has a very audible fan noise. When it comes to size, this Mini is very small, with only a few coming in at a lower volume. The BIOS can be accessed by mashing the delete key on startup. In the boot tab you can find wake on LAN, auto power on and a couple of other options. Apart from that, there's not much else available to tweak. And now with all that out of the way, let's go over the pros and cons. The Minix NGC N512 is the first Intel Mini I've come across to be exclusively powered by USB-C. It has a pretty good port selection with Thunderbolt 4. Also bundled with the Mini is a tiny GAN power supply. Intel 12th gen Minis with DDR5 are rare, but this one has it. However, only one stick of RAM is included, so the Mini runs in single channel memory mode, reducing graphics performance. Wireless and Bluetooth range is lacking. There's no cooling on the SSD, and load fan noise is on the higher side compared to other Minis. So that's Minix's first entry into the mid-range market. Some nice features and some room for improvement. Find it linked in the video description if you're interested. Oh, and if you haven't already, check out my review of the Minix Z300 0DB, a completely silent metal mini PC with external antennas for excellent wireless reception. You can find that review right here. Cheers!